Hey, greetings, uh, Wayne CFRN. Uh, we're going to do this quick because the markets were pretty quiet today. Got all the charts already marked up for you so you can see exactly what happened, what didn't happen. And that'll be the recap for today. All right. Uh, we're looking now at the S&P 500 E-mini futures. We have been stuck to this zone 2019 slash 2020 since uh, last Thursday. When we opened for trading, Friday's session, which opens Thursday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, we hit this zone and we've been above it and below it and above and below and above and below and above and below and above and you get the picture, right? Now, I explained this in some detail on the radio show today, so I'll just condense it. Uh, when I create the concierge trade alerts, I have like, uh, let's say I have a, a dial with uh, level one, level two, level three, okay? I have intentionally kicked this thing out to level three on the indices, particularly the S&P and the Dow because I don't want us to get caught up in this chop where now we're only looking for two points a day and that's that's not a lot I mean one of these candles here uh, just pick one the low is 2022 the high is 23 I mean that's that's an eight-point candle however when we're in range bound conditions like this compared to the very liberal movement that we've had over the past weeks months you have to be careful. I'm sure most of you know what it's like to get caught up in the whipsaw. Whether you're trading on a small time frame intraday, or even if you're trading larger time frames, daily, weekly, it can even happen quarterly if you're trading with that large or that long of a time horizon. So the dial's on three. That's why we've not been triggered into any trades since Sunday night. We've had Sunday, Monday, today's Tuesday, and the market's going to have to do something spectacular for us to get triggered in tonight or tomorrow in the S&P or the Dow. Now, am I saying that we could go a whole week without having a trade in the S&P and the Dow? That would be incredibly rare. In the four years, this includes, well, it's almost five now, the three years of the public beta and now the one and a half years that we've been publishing the concierge trade alerts, I don't believe there's ever been, I don't know that there's been three days back to back that we did not trigger in the S&P and the Dow. And perhaps over time, I've just decided to be a little more cautious because we have eight markets to work with, two trades per market. That's 16 opportunities, and that's if nothing triggers twice. And we know that important prices at important areas are almost always tested. So plenty of markets, plenty of opportunities, no reason to be careless and throw it away on the S&P or the Dow. I love the S&P. We'll always trade the S&P. The S&P will always give us opportunity this is just an incredibly sticky kind of an area, and I want to get set free. Now, we drew this in, I think, yesterday, this bugle or megaphone pattern. Okay, the angle's up this way, and then we come off the bottoms here. That in and of itself is not conducive to good trading. What I did today during the show is I took this upper trend line, which that's what it is, and I highlighted it. I hit Control C, that's copy, and I clicked my mouse up here, Control V, and what it did was it dropped me an identical trend line, the exact same angle. So you don't have to try and hand draw a trend line that will match up to this, just let the computer do it, then grab it with your mouse and drag it down and put it in place. That's what I did. It was, when I hit control V, it was there. I grabbed it and drug it down here, okay? Now, what, what am I doing? What's, what's the point here? Well, the point is, is I want to create a channel 
Channels are important. We had a talk about channels last week. We know that if we break out of a channel, okay, that's, that's a real nice heads up. What we want to watch for is once we pop out, which we did in the last hour, we are right now, today's the 20th day of October, and the time is 7.48 p.m. Eastern. So in the last hour, we popped out of the channel. Question is, this hour, do we pop right back in? Because if we do, then it's just more of the same. What, uh, what I'm hoping will happen is that we're doing what's called a Trader Vic right now. Why is it called a Trader Vic? Well, a guy named Vic, who was a trader, wrote a book, and he highlighted this, and he called it the Trader Vic, and it, it's really nothing proprietary at all. It's just that when price breaks through support, often it will come right around and test the underside of that support. Support becomes resistance. I know you've heard that a million times if you've been around trading for any length of time. I think where Vic felt he was putting a spin on this was that he was doing it at an angle. And instead of just the traditional support and resistance line that we see on our chart, he was actually applying the same thought process to a price channel, an angle or trend line such as this. In fact, uh, let me show you another market. Um, is it soybeans? Yes, yeah, soybeans daily. Last week, Bert and I, together, we were talking, or maybe it was a week before, it doesn't matter. We used the daily chart of November beans to construct a price channel. And what we were showing here is, you know, Beans have been trending down now since uh, June. Where do they find a bottom? Where do they start to rally? Could this be the point? Could be. So we popped out of the channel. We ran into this area here, and I drew this on the show today. I put this, added this to the chart today. This area here on the way down was good support right? Price is coming down, coming down, support, support, and then boom. Until we got into the end of June, beginning of July, and we see what happened since. Now, the important thing is that we popped out of the channel, but look where we stopped. Look where the rally died out, if you will. Support and resistance is not broken. Don't let anybody with some newfangled gadget tell you that it is. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with their newfangled gadget. I'm just saying don't let them tell you because support and resistance is not ever going to break. It's just human nature. It's, it's, it's part of nature. Yeah, I know it's on a chart and it's electronic charts and there's, you know, all kind of silicon and mouses and plasma screens and whatnot involved, but trust me, it's here to stay. Okay, so could price travel all the way down to the top of this channel? Let's go finite, Ray. Could price come all the way down to the top of this channel, find support, and then begin the real trip to the upside? Leg, retrace, boom. Could that happen? Yeah. Now, in fact, I'd love to see price come down, even over the next couple days. I'd love to see a, a sharp sell-off in soybeans come down. Maybe we get somewhere in between this 860 to 880 price range, touch the top of the channel, and then we get a serious rally going. Now, the serious rally will be able to have good profit opportunities all the way up to this shaded area. That's where we have to be careful. Okay, because what was once good support may again be good resistance. But if we can get long between 860, 880 and let it take us up to the $9 area, well, from 860 to $9, that's 40 cents. 
at $50 per penny. Nice trade. Would love to have it. Now, what could happen is from this area, we might get a leg up, double top, pull back, get a nice 38, 50, 62% retracement, and then go. So, really, this could turn into a $1, possibly even a $2 trade. Now, $2 in soybeans at $50 per penny. Okay, that's a dollar, 100 pennies times 50 bucks, 200 pennies times 50 bucks. You with me? We could have a very nice trade coming together. So let's watch it, stay on top of it, see what happens. All right. Now, let me show you one other chart real quick. Uh, it's going to be the crude oil chart. As you know, we had a concierge, or not a concierge, but a free trade that came out Sunday night for crude oil. And that alert said, here, let me grab it. Okay, the crude oil trade said to consider being long above 48.05 or short below 47.80. I've already gone through with you enough times the reason why we have a long and a short trade. It's because I'm not perfect, but I want you to be. So I'm going to give you the tools that allow you to do the very best job you possibly can. So I won't go in. If you, if you need a deeper explanation, just roll back to yesterday's recap because I went through it in great detail. Now, the number we're concerned with here, 4780. Let's drop a horizontal line at 4780. Okay. Now, this is soybeans all the way back, I'm not, not soybeans, crude oil, all the way back to the beginning of the month, October. We had some lows here on October the 2nd at $45. We put in a high on October the 9th at $51.35. So our low, anyway, you can see, and I think you know where I'm heading, right? Okay. Our trade... Sunday night, 7 p.m., the 19th, okay? See, Friday was the 16th, 17th, 18th. Actually, it was the 18th that, let's see, today... Today's the 20th. Yeah. So Sunday night was the 18th. That's when the free trade went out. I um, guess I should correct that. No, well, it says 19th. But it was the 18th. This is the 18th was Sunday night. Okay. You've all been following the trade, so you know when it was. All right. Now, here's what I want you to see. Let's get the Globex open. Globex open is that candle right there. See how the date goes from the 16th to the 18th? See that? Green candle? Okay. Now. Let's open this up where you can see it a little better. At 7.20 Sunday night, 
that's when we triggered, okay? We rallied up on the open. Okay, this is the 7 o'clock hour. On your charts, it's going to be uh, 1,900 hours military time. At 7.20, we triggered into the trade. Now, you're looking at an hourly candle. If you go to a 4-tick range or a 5-minute chart or a 1-minute chart, you can see it up close. And on the countdown page, I've really detailed how it moved back and forth, etc. Okay, we had like three different swings coming down. I just want you to see that from 47.80 to the swing low at 46.01. No, 45.72 was the swing low. 47.80 minus 45.72. Gives us two dollars and eight cents. Now, two dollars and eight cents times ten dollars per tick. There's a potential profit there, a couple thousand dollars per contract. We had a new trade come out today. Uh, for the Russell, it hasn't triggered yet. So if you haven't gone there to check that out, go there and check that out. So a $2,000 move, that was the potential. Did anybody get out at the exact low? Not anybody I know. I certainly didn't, okay? What I want you to understand is the potential that exists in these trades, not just the free trades, but the concierge trade alerts, and really important, we're bringing back, our beta test is complete, we're bringing back the one trade a day, okay? All of those trades will be executed through BERT, by BERT. So you're going to need to have an account at Daniels to take advantage of that. You're going to need to uh, fill out and sign a letter of direction with him. We'll have some paperwork uh, that you'll have to sign. Uh, some non-disclosure information, other things, and we're going to hopefully get this uh, underway, set sail by end of the week, worst case, beginning of next week. Call 866-928-3310. Let Bert know that you want in. Email us, support at cfrn.net, and let us know that you want in. Okay, now take a look at the swing low here, 4579, right? 4572, we overshot the low by seven cents. Want you to, the potential, now this is a trade that came out Sunday night at seven o'clock, it triggered at 720. If you're trading the 2420 blueprint, you're looking to make your, you know, $100 per contract per day, you're not in for the duration, that's fine. Please don't think you need to go change something. I'm speaking right now to those who are always asking, hey, can we get some larger time frame trades? Can, can you give us something that'll keep me in the market a couple of days? Uh, yes, it's here. Go back and look at the previous free trades. Watch the concierge trade alerts a couple days later. They're there. It just may, but because I've not labeled them in that manner, it might have escaped you. So, real quick, uh, let's take a look. We already took a look at the S&P. No trigger. Bonds. Beautiful day in bonds. We had a 28 tick move to the downside. If we had made it just four more ticks, we'd have had a $1,000 per contract day. We said to be short below 
Drop 28 ticks, just shy, four ticks shy of that $1,000 mark, okay? Crude oil, said to be short below 46.10. We got down to 45.72. So that's 25, 35, 38 cents, $380 per contract. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. And so here we go again, and this time the market drops to 45.81. So that's 29 cents or $290 per contract. The euro, no trigger. Soybeans, the alert said to consider being long above 898. We close the hour here, open the hour here, ran up here, and then reversed. How many pennies do we need just to be done for the day if we're looking for the $100 per contract per day? Two. How many did it give us? One tick shy of four. Pays $50 per penny. Okay? On the Russell, we did not have a trigger today. Again, the indices, the Dow, uh, no trigger. Uh, this is intentional, okay? But we do have a trade in the wind on the Russell. So if you have not gone to the countdown page, giddy up. The last market, remember we do eight markets every night, two trades per market, and as you saw, many of those trades will trigger more than once per session, okay? I mean, look at these numbers. Gold's been really good to us. Today, it was good, all right? This first move made it up to 1180.40. Nothing to write home about, okay? And then it came back, and let's just call that a stop out, okay? Now, we'll look at the next move up, and that was 1181.40. Well, that's a little better, right? That's 14 ticks. That's $140 per contract because gold pays $10 per tick. You didn't get rich today trading gold, but you had, if that's all you traded, you had a stop out, you had a chance to make up for it, and then some. Okay, so that covers the S&P, covers soybeans, covers crude oil, the euro, the Russell, the Dow, and gold. So that's it. Class dismissed. If you have not taken the free trial, do that, okay? If you go out to our Google Plus page, let me show you how simple it is to get there. CFRN dot net when the page loads click on e mini radio blog click on view recent posts i'm sorry watch recent broadcasts if you want to go to the blog click the other one and you're there okay bookmark the page and you'll never lose it again all right yesterday's uh broadcast I'm sorry, today's broadcast, yester, or last night's trade alert recap, and this is where I recap the, uh, the crude trade okay, in its entirety. Prior to that, what are you going to find? Uh, Monday's radio broadcast, and it just keeps going. There is literally hundreds upon hundreds of hours of trading information awaiting you on this page, okay? It's the CFRN Google Plus eMini community. There are radio programs, webinars, seminars, Q&A sessions, special classes that Bert and I may have done, uh, you name it. If it's got anything to do with eMinis, you'll find it there on that page. Uh, you'll 
see and hear me talking about Fibonacci and all of the different tools that we use, our own proprietary indicator set, our methodology, our strategy, our 2420 blueprint, if you don't find an answer to a question on our site or on that page, you can call us anytime, 949-42-E-MINI, 949-42-E-MINI, or just send an email to support at cfrn.net. Hope to see, look at what's happening right here. Remember we talked about the S&P popped out of the channel. Our concern is would it pop? Now we're eight minutes into this candle. Already we've popped back into the channel. But let the hour close, okay? If we close back inside the channel, then it's a high probability that we're going to go back to the midpoint. If we close below the channel, then get ready to put on a trade to the short side. Go take a look at our concierge trade alert for tonight. If you don't have access to that, then look at the chart. Give it some thought. Remember, these are last week zones. Our partners do get the zones. This week's zones, they got a Monday morning at 6.15 a.m. Eastern. That could be you. Also, on today's radio broadcast, about the last 30 minutes of the show, I went into great detail. Someone asked, please explain these weekly trading zones to me and how I put them to use. And so I did that uh, to the best of my ability. And I used as an example, well, I went through four different charts, but I worked heavily with the Russell. This is all last week, okay? Uh, we've got partners who tell me that they're partners simply for the zones. So, you know, take a trial and see if they work for you as well as they work for them. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, and I'll see you tomorrow in the live trading room.